Hey guys, this is Scott from the Clay Lab. Welcome back to our channel. Today we're gonna to be changing things up a little bit. We're gonna be talking about an entirely new topic. And this is something that we were very interested in finding out more about as we got into competition target shooting. As other guys and I started looking into attending shoots around the country, we started wondering, is it feasible to fly with your shotgun? Today we're gonna to find out. For today's video, Jeremy and I were on our way up to Chicago for the North Central Regional. After a quick check to make sure our bags were on board, we were on our way. Now, I'm one of those weird people that enjoys going to the airport and flying. All the things that tend to annoy other people, I tend to actually enjoy for some strange reason. That being said, I know most of you are probably not like me, and I think especially the prospect of flying with your shotgun can be a stressful thing to think about. So today, we wanted to provide a variety of tips to make that process easier for you and hopefully help convince you that this is not as... Uh, problematic as you might have thought. The first tip is that all firearms must be checked and declared to the airline uh, as well as the TSA when you're checking it in. And uh, that seems like it ought to be fairly obvious, but you know, if this is your first time flying with a firearm, you know, it's easy to overlook things. Going along with this, our second tip is to allow plenty of time for check-in. At Raleigh-Durham International, this really wasn't a problem. Whether you were doing an express check-in or going through the line, it really wasn't that long of a wait. Chicago O'Hare was a completely different story. And we actually were cutting it pretty close to make our flight by having to go through that check-in line rather than being able to use the kiosks or online check-in like you might have gotten used to with other flights. The next tip is that every airline has a different set of rules. And it's really, really helpful to look those up in advance. Pretty much every major airline is gonna have an area on their website that describes that. You could probably call the offices of that airline and they could also give you the information over the phone but just make sure you understand the rules it'll save you a lot of headaches when you get to the airport tip number four is something i personally have the most trouble with i'm the type that when i go to a major shoot i like to bring all of my gear with me when you're flying you've got limited space and limited weight that you can take with you so you don't really have that luxury going along with that you want to probably think about buying ammo at the vent you can take ammo with you but only in limited amounts and it has to be in the factory box. Actually there's your gun case right there. That's Tip number six, get a good case for your shotgun. Baggage handling can be rough sometimes and you want to make sure your gun survives. <laughs> Mine or yours? No, I'm really hoping it was yours, but it was probably <laughs> mine. Yeah, unfortunately that was my shotgun. Jeremy's, as you can see, was handled much more gently. It's not the, the quality and the protection of the green gun case. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. It was a pretty nice little uh, slam on the ground there. Now that we were on the ground in Chicago, the next task was to collect our luggage, including our two shotguns. And so tip number seven is know where to go to pick up your gun. This actually varies quite a bit. Now, typically the way it's supposed to work is it's supposed to go to a baggage office down near where the baggage carousels are. If it's after hours or on a weekend, as was the case here, you may find that it actually shows up on the baggage carousel. Just be alert for both possibilities. Looks like everything survived intact. Thumbs up. Tip number eight is to consider how you're gonna get around when you get to your destination. Probably the easiest thing when you're going to a range is to rent a car while you're there, but be aware that if you're gonna be taking public transportation, you may need to be prepared to carry this gun around quite a bit. Tip number nine, definitely only applies to Chicago, but check out the deep dish pizza. Giordano's is a solid choice, right. and this was pretty much our first order of business when we got there. It's good, what you think? 
Tip number 10 is to know the case requirements. This is going to vary a little bit from country to country, but generally speaking, they need to have locks on them that only you can access. All right, guys, we made it from Chicago O'Hare. Now it's time to see if our guns actually survived the trip. It's a little bit doubtful based on what we saw with the baggage handling. Jeremy's gun did okay, uh, but let's see how this turned out. So you can see with my new greedy case, Jeremy did the same thing but uh, you can get a vinyl cover for it. This one's made by Intel case. And these vinyl covers really help prevent the scratches um, with all the normal wear and tear that you see with uh, baggage handling. So, so far vinyl cover looks like it's okay. So far so good, um, as you can see. We didn't really show it at the airport because we didn't want to show the check-in procedure itself, but uh, you have a card that goes in there that's going to vary a little bit by airline, uh, but they just uh, confirmed that your firearm's unloaded. Uh, so far, so good. Looks like my end, which is probably one of the more fragile pieces in there, did just fine. And you'll see I actually took up some extra space in the case using some foam that had come with the case and also some foam I've collected from shipping things Reason, uh, recently. So all this is looking pretty good. Let's check the receiver. Yep, and the receiver seems to have survived the journey just fine. So no concerns there. Uh, once again, you can see here with the barrel, there was a little extra space in the case. So I had to put some foam in there just to make sure it's not banging around too much. Yep, barrels appear to be good. So, uh, even though we saw a little bit of uh, rough handling with the bag, it did just fine. So, uh, I have no big concerns. This is now my fourth time flying with a gun. Uh, I found it to be a pretty simple, uh, straightforward procedure. And uh, the gun arrived safely with the Negrini case. So, so far, so good. Yeah, I mean, you can see some like very light scuffs, but nothing like right. It's just dirt more than anything. <laughs> no, looks like it survived just fine. Do Jeremy's coat here in case anyone wants a blazer <laughs> gently used. just like it did when it left home. All right, and I noticed you didn't use any extra foam in yours, so you really just packed yours as is. Yeah, just like I was taking it off to a shoot, I threw a few more accessories in the case just to help with consolidating my stuff. But other than that, yeah, I just packed it like normal. Yeah, so this was actually my first time flying with a, with a, a firearm. It was super easy. Um, it's one more pit stop at the airport, just to take it to the separate check-in area. Um, but it might have added five minutes to our check-in time. Um, I think the only thing I would recommend is just, again, go a little bit early, just in case there's a bit of a backup there or extra people. But um, other than that, it was pretty seamless and it looks like everything arrived in good shape. So yeah, no reservations about doing it again in the future. As I mentioned before, we were actually going to Chicago for a purpose, and that was to go to Northbrook Sporting Clays for the North Central Regional Championship. Here's just a small sample of what we experienced.
One big advantage of flying to a tournament is that you get to go to cities that you may not have had much of a chance to visit before. Now, I had been to Chicago before and absolutely loved Gibson's Steakhouse, so Jeremy and I made a point of going there for dinner one night. Now, on our way back, we decided to kind of take our rental car around the city a little bit and ran into a traffic jam on Michigan Avenue. This was pretty surprising for 10 p.m. on a Sunday night, but we figured it was Chicago. To our horror, though, we found that it was actually Lollapalooza. This huge music festival attracts more than 100,000 people to Chicago every year. And unfortunately, it was ending just as we were driving by. We literally sat there for about an hour and a half. As we were sitting there, Jeremy and I both realized just how old we are now. And I guess it should have been obvious before, but, uh, you know, that really just kind of confirmed it. So anyway, tip number 11 for flying with your shotgun is avoid Lollapalooza. Now, you know, we were kind of having fun with this episode, but really, I hope the point that we're getting across is that it's actually pretty easy to fly to a tournament. This doesn't have to be an intimidating process for you. Main thing is to know the rules before you get there uh, to the airport account for enough time, and just make sure that you're smart about how you're packing. For now, thanks for watching today's video. Please hit the comments and let us know what your experience has been with flying with a shotgun, and let us know if there are any tips that we missed. We're always open for ideas. There he is, straight ahead. Go get him. <laughs>